Hi friends! Today I am going to try to do a short video. I actually did one already and it was way too long so I wrote down some notes. I'm going to be talking about my plastic camera, the toy camera called the Holga. If you want more information about um, the history of Holga, I'll put the Wikipedia link down below. But a Holga is basically a toy camera. It is plastic, plastic lens, and a lot of times it's used for learning. Um, it's completely analog, uh, no batteries even in this one. This one does not have a flash. Some of them have flashes. If I ever do want to use a flash, it's got a hot shoe. So there are just a few controls on it. There are distance. Here you can see these different ones along here that you can um, shift back and forth to get to. You've got distance of very far away is the mountain one. A group which would be maybe 15 feet away, um, a big group, a, a smaller group, maybe about 8 feet away. And then the closest for a portrait is about a meter-ish. And then you've got uh, sun or shade here on this little one. And then on the bottom you can either do a bulb setting or the normal setting. Uh, a bulb setting you would have to hold down the, um, the shutter and then when you were done, if you got a couple seconds and you let it up, a lot of times you will be using, um, using the camera on a tripod in that case and there's a little tripod mount down at the bottom and even when you do that you still have to be aware of trying to stay as steady as possible because you can get a camera shake with that but those are those are basically the controls that you have with this camera um, because of the plastic lens you get these funky kind of aberrations where you have either vignetting or you can see just like little double exposures around the edges. Uh, it used to be that people talked about um, light leaks with these and would tape up all the seams, but I have found, I have never found with either of the two that I've had um, any light leaks on them. I do have some tape over the little, um, the little, uh, what, what you would call them, slider closures for when you take the back off for loading it, because sometimes those will those will get a little loose and then the back will pop off and you'll expose your film. So I keep some, I keep some um, tape on that and I keep tape over where I have my film count on the back because if sun does get on that it can be bleed through to the image below. Also you don't want to leave the camera with a bunch of sun shining at the, the lens. They usually do come with a lens cap although I don't know where mine are. Um, uses 120 film, which is this size film. You can use color or black and white. I typically like to use, uh, right now I'm using an ISO 200 for the color. Um, I have 400 ISO in here. Um, that's a little bit that's a little bit fast. Things could get blown out in bright sun with that. I typically like to go maybe a 125 and sometimes 100 uh, ISO if it's really bright outside. What else do we have about this? Um, when you get the camera, it, it normally shoots a 6x6 negative, so you'll have 12 images per roll of film. It usually has another mask in it um, that can do a 6x4 or 5, so more of a rectangular uh, shot, in which case I think it's like, I think it's like 16, you can get 16 images in that case, but I always keep, I, I never use that mask, I always go square with it. Um, you can get closer than, you know, a meter. Uh, but you would have to use uh, these little close-up filters that usually come in about sets of three. Um, I can do a video about 
using the close-up filter specifically in another video. This is just a general overview because um, you have to know your, ah, your distances and, and all that sort of thing. Um, flash, I think I spoke about flash already with that. Um, I was had a question on a very old Holga video I have here on my channel and somebody was asking about when to use flash. I almost never use flash with uh, my Holga. If I need extra light, I'll do a bulb setting. Um, and I can talk about that in another video too. Um, but you could use flash, I suppose, uh, in a situation where you wanted to do a little bit of fill, especially if you had like a, um, it's backlit behind your subject. Um, you can do multi-exposures um, since whenever you advance the film, that's when it goes to your next shot. And if you don't advance it, a lot of times you do accidental um, double exposures with these, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But you can do, you could do as many exposures one over the other, uh, as many times as you want before you advance the film. Um, I have seen some people do really interesting work where they have done maybe, I don't know, a dozen exposures and you just get this very slight sort of movement in the picture because of that. I've never actually tried that. I usually do. If I do a double exposure and you'll see in the slideshow at the end, there is like one or two in there. Um, and then you can do what I call a faux pano or a holgorama, <laughs> where I overlap three, um, three shots on what would be normally two, you know, two frames by only advancing, by making my shot, only advancing halfway and then advancing the rest of the way to the next shot. And that would be something to also talk about more specifically in another video um, about the Holgas, if you would like to know that. Um, so one of the questions I was having on my old video was about composition. Um, and with the Holga, I have found that it has just taken me some time to figure out how to get the compositions that I like. Um, I would say, generally speaking, I wouldn't try to shoot something far off in the distance because then it's just going to look itty bitty, you know, just because of, you know, the, the control or lack thereof you have with the film. I like to get some kind of focal point in the middle of it. If you are shooting further in the distance, like a tree or a rock or, or what have you. And I also look at how the light is falling um, on a subject, uh, where it is, if it makes interesting shadows and that sort of thing. Um, I think that if using a Holga, it takes, it's, it's easy, it's simple, it's very straightforward. But to get a little bit more creative with it, you probably just have to use a lot. That's that's what I did. I mean, I've been shooting with them now for probably close to 20 years. I mean, it's not the only camera that I shoot with, but, but I like it. Um, and it just, you know, there is an investment of a certain number of rolls of film to just get used to how the camera, how you can make the camera work for you. Um, I'm not, I'm not a, a technical photographer at all. Um, my brain gets overwhelmed with that kind of stuff. So I learn through my experience and everybody's going to be different um, with how you use your cameras and whether you're technical or not technical and how creative you get with it. But I think one of the biggest things for me was just experimenting and, um, and using it a lot. 
So I think that's all I want to yap at you about uh, the Holgas. They're, they're fun cameras. You can get them online. You can get them on, on Amazon or you can get them at Adorama or b &H. I can put links uh, below and the film as well you can get at Adorama and b &H. Um, I don't get the most expensive film for this because the nature of the camera includes a lot of funkiness. I don't worry about really pristine, fine grain kind of film with it. I don't mind it having texture and grain and just some general weirdness to it. Um, but that's just me. I mean, you can, you can shoot really fine with the Holga as well. Um, so yeah, I'll think about what I can put in the down bar and I'll think about what other kinds of um, videos I can, um, more instructional kind of videos uh, with the Holga if you would like that. And without further ado, uh, enjoy the slideshow <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe, especially if you want more videos like this. All right, take care, folks. Mm -hmm.